Ms. Uh, Brazil, Mr. Walgan, your next witness is. Thank you, Your Honor. People call Martin Blunt. Sir, would you please rise and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly state that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Please state your name for the record. Spell your first and last name. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> first name is Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. Last name is Blunt, B-L-O-U-N-T. Firefighter Blunt, good afternoon, sir. Hello, sir. Let me provide you with some instructions, which I give to every witness in every case. The first, please sit back and relax. The second, please speak in a loud voice so we can hear you. The third, if you're called upon to provide a yes or no answer, answer that way rather than using slang like uh-huh, uh-uh. And lastly, please wait until you hear an entire question before you even start to respond. Many of us every day think we know what question is going to be asked, so we start to answer it before it's asked in its entirety. In court, just wait for the entire question. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Correct? Ms. Brazil. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, ma'am. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a Los Angeles City firefighter paramedic. How long have you worked for the fire department? Uh, 20 years, ma'am. Have you been a paramedic the entire time you've been employed by the fire department? No, ma'am. I became a paramedic in 1999. Describe for me, please, your paramedic training. What did it consist of? Uh, the paramedic training was uh, all together was for a year. Uh, once we got there, we did uh, six months of didactics, and then we went into uh, clinical field. Then we went out into the field for uh, four months of on-job training. Who taught those classes? Uh, UCLA paramedic uh, instructors. Doctors and nurses? Yes, ma'am. And your experience in the field, also supervised by more experienced paramedics? Yes, ma'am. Is there a recertification process that you undertake to maintain your paramedic certification? Yes, ma'am. It's called continuing education, and it's every 48 months that you do your license. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to hear what I'm you sorry, said. It's called, we have a cough. I'm sorry. It's, it's called continue, continue education, and it's every 48, uh, it's for 40 hours for every two years. So every two years, you're required to take 40 hours 40, of... 48 hours, I'm sorry. 48 hours? Yes, ma'am. Moving to June 25th, 2009, sir, where were you assigned in your employment with Los Angeles Fire Department? Uh, Fire Station 71. Uh, the address is 107 South Beverly Glen Boulevard on the corner of Sunset and Beverly Glen. Did you respond to a radio call coming into your station at approximately 1221 directing you to an address 100 North Carrollwood Drive? Yes, ma'am. Is that basically just down the street from your Fire Station 71? Yes, ma'am. Did you ride in a fire truck or a rescue ambulance to the location? Rescue ambulance, ma'am. Were you the driver or the passenger? Driver. Who was the passenger? Uh, firefighter paramedic Richard Sinniff. When you arrived at the Carrollwood location, you parked your vehicle? Yes, ma'am. In front of the residence? Yes, ma'am. Inside the gates? Yes, ma'am. Near the front door? Yes, ma'am. After you parked the rescue ambulance, did you go inside the residence? Uh, yes, ma'am. Were you assisted by individuals directing you to the proper location inside the residence? Yes, ma'am. Who were those individuals, if you know? Uh, it was uh, bodyguards on, on, on the staff. On the staff? On, on site, yeah, on site. Besides yourself and your partner, Rich Seneff, were there other rescue personnel who responded to Carrollwood? Yes, ma'am. Who were those individuals? Uh, first was uh, our captain, was named Captain Jeff Mills, uh, firefighter Brett Herring, and firefighter paramedic Mark Goodwin. Did those individuals arrive on a fire truck? Yes, ma'am. Fire truck parked outside the residence on the street? Yes, ma'am. Did you enter the residence and proceed upstairs to the location where you were informed a patient needed assistance? Yes, ma'am. Were there other individuals in your paramedic group who entered the bedroom before you? Yes, ma'am. 
When you entered the bedroom, what did you see? I saw um, a gentleman um, laying on the bed uh, when, I arrived, when, we, when I got upstairs. Was the uh, patient fully on the bed or partially on the bed? He was fully on the bed, ma'am. And did you see someone that you see in the courtroom in the resident's bedroom as well as yeah. the patient? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is that individual seated here, Dr. Conrad Murray, in the dark suit and the white shirt? Yes, ma'am. Indicating, Indeed. thank you, Your Honor. Indicating the defendant. Yes. Once you step inside the bedroom, tell me what you see going on by those who've entered before you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, two of our individuals. Uh, I was uh, Mark Goodwin and Brett Herring uh, was assisting. Uh, Dr. Murray uh, helping uh, the individual off the bed onto the floor. Did you see anyone other than Dr. Murray, aside from your group of rescue personnel, inside the bedroom at the time that you entered? No, ma'am. Describe, please, your observations of Dr. Murray when you entered the bedroom. Uh, he was a little flustered, ma'am. Uh, he was sweating profusely, and uh, he was a little agitated. Did you hear him say anything when you entered the room? Yes, ma'am. What is that? I uh, say uh, he needs help. Could you help him, please? As the driver of the rescue ambulance, do you have a particular role pre-assigned that you will be performing when you attend to the emergency once you've arrived? Yes, ma'am. What was your designated role when you arrived to Carrollwood? I was a driver, and I was considered the patient person. And I, well, my job is to uh, uh, initial treatment and assessment of the patient. So you're directly hands-on with the patient, correct? Yes, ma'am. And your partner, Richard Sinef, he was the passenger. Did he have a different role? Yes, ma'am. Was he the communications person? Obtain information, convey information to rescue personnel located off-site? Yes, ma'am. When you entered into the room, was Miss uh, strike that. When you entered the room and you saw the patient, did you recognize who the patient was? Yes, ma'am. Did you immediately recognize him? Yes, ma'am. And you recognized him to be Mr. Michael Jackson, correct? Yes, ma'am. Once you are inside the room, you've made the recognition that the patient is Michael Jackson in distress. Do you see your colleagues relocating Mr. Jackson to an area at the foot of the bed? Yes, ma'am. Once Mr. Jackson is located at the foot of the bed, do you begin particular efforts as part of your designated job to assist him? Yes, ma'am. Describe what you did, please. Uh, yes, once, I went, once we all arrived on the scene, we got there. Uh, first thing I did was I had my, uh, my medical box and my uh, defibrillator in my hand. I went up to the head of the, of the patient and uh, opened it up and start uh, basic uh, life support, which was uh, CPR on the patient. Uh, what we did was uh, one of the individuals started doing compressions, and I started giving uh, breaths for the patient. I uh, pulled out my uh, 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 BVM, which is a uh, uh, Ambu bag, and I con started to uh, uh, start uh, breathing for my patient at that time. Let me stop you there for a mm -hmm. second. Let's just focus on your basic life support efforts. Okay. And if I understand your testimony correctly, your job is to uh, provide air to Mr. Jackson, correct? Yes, Independent of chest compressions and CPR, mm -hmm. just focusing on airway, would you characterize that as being the most important life-saving function that should start immediately, and you did start it immediately? Yes, ma'am. And you used the phrase basic life support, correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, I want to focus just on the steps that are encompassed within your characterization of basic life support. Prior to the time that you introduced the AMBU bag into your efforts, did you use a tongue suppressor to assist you in any way? Yes, ma'am. Describe what you did, please, and what the function was of the tongue suppressor. Okay. Uh, it's uh, what we call it uh, uh, orofan gel. Um, I'm sorry. It's uh, called an OP airway. And you what spell the word you use, please? Uh, it's oral, oral pharyngeal. 
That's what it's called, uh, airway. And what it does is that it's like a tongue suppressor. And what it does is that you stick and in, in, insert into the mouth to depress the tongue so the tongue would not go in the back of the mouth to stop the air from going in. Mr. Blunt, would that be similar to uh, when, when you're a child and you go to the doctor and a tongue suppressor is placed on your mouth so the doctor can look down your throat, only a more sophisticated version? Yes, ma'am. So the tongue suppressor is utilized by you to hold the tongue down to make your job easier with the airway assistance? Yes, ma'am. So once you put the tongue suppressor in the mouth, what's the next step that you take in your basic life support endeavor? Uh, head tilt, chin left. I took the head, uh, ten, took the head and tilted it back a little bit so that that way it would be a, a clear view, a clear, clear focus into the lungs so it would be no uh, obstructions. So you take Mr. Jackson's head and you <coughs> tilt it slightly and uh, to, in a way to make the airway be as clear and unobstructed as possible so that if he's breathing, he can breathe, correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you then utilize the AMBU bag to further assist in this basic life support for breath? Yes, ma'am. Describe how that works, please. Uh, it's, it's like artificial air. Uh, normally people will come down and give you breaths, but all it does is that it's, um, it's like a big ball. And what it does is that you, it has a mask on it, and you cover the nose and the mouth with it, and um, you, you blow into it, and it's just like blowing, in, blowing into a person's mouth with your mouth itself. And when you, when you depress it, it automatically uh, inflates itself again. It's a more efficient method than mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation where one person's mouth's on the victim's mouth? Yes, ma'am. Do you utilize an oxygen tank in any way with the AMBU bag apparatus? Yes, ma'am. And did you, in fact, utilize an oxygen tank when you affixed the AMBU bag and the suction mask to Mr. Jackson's face? Yes, ma'am. Was that an oxygen tank that you brought with you? Yes, ma'am. Did you complete all of these basic life support steps by yourself? Yes, ma'am. And approximately how much time in minutes or seconds would you estimate that it took for you to accomplish 